Welcome, welcome, my friends, to the Lance Wall Now Show. And uh, boy, we have a really cool broadcast today because we're talking about the Arts Mountain. We have a movie called Paul's Promise that is just it's garnered like around 8, 10, 11, 12 awards already. It's opening in 400 theaters. Christians are now beginning to fund projects that are fighting back on the Leviathan-like distortion in the airways of narratives and stories. Powerful Christian movies and documentaries are about to pummel the airwaves. And I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this broadcast today. Brought to you, sponsored by Birch Gold. LanceWallnow.com forward slash Birch is where I'm sending my friends because I've discovered something. The Democrats are already preparing the nation for economic turmoil. And what are they saying? The Republicans are responsible. Going to tell you something. Gold, silver, commodities, learn what to do to invest your money in something that will survive the economic storm. There is a strategy you can download. There's 23 pages you can read, but you want to go to lancewalnut.com forward slash birch and get a hold of the game plan. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. When the shaking happens, Haggai says, God's going to build his kingdom and he's going to provide for you during the process. That's lancewalnut.com forward slash birch. You want to go there now, download that document and stay for this powerful interview. Greetings, greetings all across the printed plains. We have now, I understand, 6 million downloads in this podcast. That's because of you, the, uh, the, the unexpected patriot audience out there that has been working with me in the Seven Mountains all these many years, and we're becoming quite a force to be reckoned with, and I, it's because of you. You know, Bannon has his posse, uh, Gene Bailey has our Flashpoint Army, but I don't know what the heck to call you, but you are, you are definitely, uh, ba- the, the shorthand we have is the Wall Now Warriors, because you guys show up and you do stuff. Now, I need you to also be tipped off about a powerful movie. We've got some arts projects that are coming out this year that are absolutely stellar. One of them is called Paul's Promise. I've got the uh, I've got the guy, the driving force behind this, an executive producer on hold with me right now. He's coming in. It's Nick Logan. And Nick has a stellar uh, background with projects of this sort. But uh, since I want to interview you, Nick, the same way that I would want the uh, the audience would want me to do it. Tell me a little bit about your background and how you ended up doing a project like this. And then we're going to show the trailer so people can see it. Well, I appreciate the time, Lance. The reality is this. God has wired us to emote. And if I asked somebody, what was the first Bible verse you remembered? They would say John 3.16. But unfortunately, the way we are, we remember more Beatles songs than we do scripture. So when I look at the different media that you can work with, I think that film is very important. I think what we show on film is something that will lodge in our souls. So now, so you got the movie uh, is is the story. This is based on a true story. Is that correct? It is. It's a true story about Paul Holderfield. And Paul grew up in a time that was very tumultuous in the 60s. And my family marched with Martin Luther King. So as a young boy, I walked through some of this stuff. And when the script came to us, and I looked at all the things that were happening with the what they call the summer of love with Black Lives Matter. I said, you know what? You, you're, you're totally missing the reality of what God's redemption can be. And what we really should be looking at is not Black Lives Matter, but Adamic Lives Matter. Those who come from the seed of Adam. Oh, wow. So, so when a script like this comes together, who writes it? Well, we had a writer, um, and he goes by Vitya Stevens. Uh, he's a dear friend of mine, and it was great material because it's a biopic. And, you know, in looking at how we were going to put the cast together, we were very fortunate. Uh, one of the people that was looking on the production side was Ryan O'Quinn, who will be joining us shortly. But we sat down and said, Ryan, you're the perfect person to play Paul Holderfield. All right, let's bring Ryan in. I understand we have him now. Uh, ready to join us, Ryan. And you've been. Hey, guys. There we go, Ryan. So, you know, you're, you're, what's interesting about you is like people will look at you and go, oh, I know who that is. And they'll start listing up where they might have seen you and, and, and how they've seen you. But uh, so you've, you've been in this business for a long time. 
what was it about this role that uh, attracted you or was it uh, the money or what? Well, tell me how you got into this. <laughs> well, well, thank you. First of all, and I have been in, the, in this business longer than I care to admit, but um, you know, at our company, Damascus Road Productions, we, we seek to tell stories with, with truth. And by truth, I mean, truth with a, with a capital T and, and Nick Logan's company, Salt Shaker and ours are aligned in exactly that way. We really want to bring in the message and the hope uh, of the light of the, of the gospel truth to Jesus and, and the things that we bring to the big screen. So when he brought this project to us, uh, after reading it, I knew straight away that we had to be a part of this project. Among other things, like Nick said, it's a, it's a biopic. And uh, it's a true story. And, you know, you can you can spend all day long yelling at each other, uh, uh, trying to change somebody's mind about faith. But what you can't argue with is somebody's true story. And so after reading the story of Paul Holderfield and just seeing his heart and his heart for ministry and his heart for other people, um, that's exactly the kind of pictures that we want to green light here. So it was a perfect marriage between Nick's company and ours to get this out on the big screen. Yeah, I, 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 you know what I want to do? Now, you guys are probably, I always think about this, when uh, actors and producers have to sit through a 90-second uh, promo reel that they've seen a thousand times, but you're going to have to sit through it because we have, uh, we'll have millions of people watch this, and I want them to see this because the visual is so gripping. Can you guys run the, uh, uh, the promo reel so the folks can see this? Okay, here it comes. Heavenly Father, my first request is for my son, Paul. He's a good boy, but he's stubborn as a mule. Why you gotta go and make me feel bad? Why you gotta eavesdrop? And I also know you've got great things planned for him. My mama is laying dying of cancer and ain't nothing I can do about it. Jimmy's house burned down. You figure out just how many black fires you put out this month? You go get it, boy! Oh. Jimmy, who are all these kids? I can't think of one verse in the Bible that commands these kids to come here to eat. But I can think of a bunch that commands me to feed. We all get lost sometimes. The important thing is what we do with our life when we find our way back. I know you don't think you can trust God. But you can. I was prideful. I was hurt. You was right, Mama. I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband. God's got my life. Well, and it's having a great receptivity, isn't it, already in, in theaters? You're getting some great reviews. And I saw like nine of these awards that are all in these oak leaves, you know, when it opens up and I was trying to make them out. Uh, has the receptivity to this been as, as strong as it seems? It has been. It's It's been enormous. And, you know, when you're in the, the, the thick of it, we often say when you're in the trenches, you know, when you're making the movie, Honestly, the last thing you're thinking about is awards or laurels or anything, you know, the, on the other side of it. You're really just trying to make your day in those 12 and 14 hour days just you know, are, are taxing, to say the least. And so you're trying to get it done. And to, to sit here where we are now, where Nick and I are now, and to, to enjoy um, finally exhaling and being able to buy a ticket and sit down and eat popcorn next to our colleagues and next to our family and just really see the, the fruits of that labor is, is just enormously, I'm enormously grateful. And the, the laurels that you saw up there are just a few. Um, I, I, I've kind of lost count at this point, but I think somewhere, Lance, it's in the neighborhood of 29 nominations and 21 wins, including six best picture wins. And, and you know, that, that that's the kind of, of uh, human pats on the back that None of us ever expected, but honestly, more than that, and I know that I'm speaking for Nick, is the, the feedback that we've gotten, even since Friday, this film opened uh, on the 21st, and the feedback and just the direct messages and the personal messages that we've gotten from people who have said that it changed lives and it changed hearts and, uh, you know, the, the, the fervent prayers of a praying parent and uh, praying for prodigal children and just all of those are are honestly, and I know I'm speaking for Nick as well, just honestly mean more to us than than recognition from from film festivals. But it uh, it's quite an honor for sure. Now, there's something the, unique about the marketing concept here because obviously I'm I'm a, I'm a conservative Christian and I'm a bit frustrated. We have 80 million 
charismatic and Pentecostal and evangelicals in the United States, if they ever wanted to, to participate in making a movie a success, it wouldn't be hard to do because we all have, we're all one unit. But it's hard to get every, all that, you know, the octopus is on roller skates. It's hard to get it moving in a coordinated way. But uh, are there groups are still going to see this or churches to see it? Or uh, this is really a, a, something to go see together with other people, isn't it? Or is, is, is that phase done and everybody just kind of goes off on their own now? How, how do you recommend this? Because I could think of groups, prayer groups, Bible studies, et cetera, that go, I didn't know about them. It just opened. They want to go see it. So <laughs> can they yes. do something like that? Yeah, yeah it's an absolutely do. Yeah, it's an important thing to do because the big thing is we came out on a weekend with Black Adam. We came out with the most recent iteration of Halloween. But the bottom line is this. The Bible is really clear. And Lance, some of the stuff you've talked about is taking every thought captive. And to take every thought captive, you need to filter what you're putting in your mind. And whether it's our film or others, we need people right now to take a moment and go out. It's a small investment in the future, but Hollywood listens to the dollar. And if we can get people to see Paul's promise and other Christian films, they're going to say, you know what? This uh, Christian stuff works. And that's the idea. We want people to be touched by it. We want the Holy Spirit to change the hearts of those people who see it. So this week is really important. Our opening weekend, we're through that. But this week, there is still an opportunity. If you go to paulspromisemovie.com, go out, take your bride, go on a date, take somebody else, grab somebody and show them that this film, this is not going to be Veggie Tales. I'll tell you flat out. This is a gritty story of a real man's life. Paul's Promise Movie.com. For those of you, 800 and some thousand downloads a month. I want you to uh, remember that Paul's Promise Movie.com. Go there and find out where, where you could see it and then go see it and make it a mission to do. Now, I'm curious about Joseph Cannon. Uh, he plays uh, he plays a prominent role here, and I understand he never did a faith based movie. What was? Can you speak a little bit to that experience? How did you guys end up um, hooking him into this? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to speak into that. We, you know, really we uh, we brought Joseph in first as a writer. We we certainly wanted to make sure that we got the black um, voice correct. Uh, somebody that looks like me and somebody that looks like Nick are not the best person to speak into African American point of view. But the but but the last thing we wanted to do is guess at it. So we reached out to uh, a broad number of colleagues, and they um, recommended that Joseph come in and speak to him because he's an, an incredible writer as well. What should have been Lance probably a, a thirty minute um, you know fact gathering session and and kind of walking through his notes on the script turned into a three hour unbeknownst to us, a three hour audition sort of. <laughs> so he was just so engaging and had, and was just so great in the room and just had all of these ideas about the, the character of Jimmy Lipkin, which is based on a real person. Uh, at the end of about three hours, we collectively decided, well, we're going to have to, we're going to have to think through this. We're going to have to regroup. And, and honestly, our director who was, who was in the room and, and several of the producers said, don't let him get to the parking lot until we call his agent and manager. He has to play this role. So we were so blessed. And that goes, that goes for all of our, our uh, actors as well. We, you know, you make a short list on the development side, the pre-production phase, you make a short list of the people that you'd love to be in the film. And in our case, we were so fortunate to get every single person that was at the top of our list. Amen. <laughs> How cool is that? I only want to give my business to you. I don't want to give it to a woke corporation. I don't want to give it to some big guy that's going to be using my money against me. That day is over, folks. You can now go to Public Square. Go to lancewallnow.com forward slash public square and find the businesses that are patriot businesses, that are faith-filled businesses, and put your business on the map so we can start doing business with you. lancewallnow.com forward slash public square. So how long, now a little behind the scenes stuff that everybody will want to know, if you're at a party right now, we'd all be asking you, how long does it take to make a movie like this? Like, what's the length of time? And are you really saying those production days are 13 hour days? Give us a little behind the scenes on what your world is like. I've got lots of aspiring artists. And I gotta tell you something, as proof is in the pudding with you guys, there is an entrepreneurial willingness on the part of American Christians that have resources to put money into projects that can get an ROI, even a modest ROI. They recognize we're in a battle of ideas in America right now, and they want to see projects like this get out there. So I see a renaissance in, in powerful, good Christian filmmaking and documentaries. But tell us a little bit behind the scenes on this. What's the lifespan of this? How long does it take from concept to end product to pull something like this off? 
I, I will go back at one step prior to that and just kind of, um, you know, we should never at this point, I'll see speak personally. I should never be surprised at how God works things out and how the Lord's hand, uh, is on all of this. But, um, just to back up one step further, we actually shot the movie in New Mexico and I was slated to shoot another project at the time in New Mexico. We were already in the queue. We were already set to go. We had a, a crew base, um, ready to shoot. And for these low budget, you know, uh, independent films, sometimes the, the, uh, monies fall out and financing for whatever reason doesn't happen. And we were all set. We were about eight weeks away from principal photography and we got a call on a Friday saying that the financier had backed out. Now, keep in mind, Lance, we were in the height of COVID. We were, if not the first, among the very first feature films that were greenlit by the Screen Actors Guild and allowed to go into production. So we were kind of in, you know, in this weird um, phase of building the plane as you fly it because the unions were trying to figure out what to do. The 22-page the white paper had just come out instructing how actors are to be working with directors and what it looks like on set. So we were among the first to, to walk alongside them and figure that out. But uh, on a Friday afternoon, we got a call that the film that we were slated to shoot in New Mexico was not going to happen. The financing had been pulled and we were, we were, had no movie all of a sudden. So my wife and I, who own our, our company, our production company, tried to figure out over the next 15 hours or so, how do we break it to our staff who's poured about nine months of development into this film? How do we break it to our staff that we, we don't have a movie? Well, here's how the Lord works. Uh, 15 hours after we had gotten that phone call uh, from, from a different financier for a different project on the East Coast, Nick Logan called and said, I have this project that I've been circling. I really think it's got legs. I really think it's an important movie that needs to be told right now. And keep in mind, in addition to um, in addition to the you know the, the zeitgeist of of COVID, we were also in the middle of we had just come through the, the the headline was George Floyd. We were in the in the middle of trying to figure out where we are as a country and what do what do we how do we examine race relations and what does that mean? And Nick right. said, "I have a I have a film here, a, a script for a movie, and I really think." that we need to partner on this. And I really think we need to get it done. And I personally, Nick said, we'll make sure that this gets done. And I said, what's the budget? And Lance, it was to the penny, the exact amount of the film that we had just lost 15 hours earlier. So my, my, my lost sleep and lamenting the Lord remedied by way of Nick Logan. And he swept in and we didn't miss a beat. We didn't have to cancel our people. And we went to work uh, about eight weeks later at principal photography in New Mexico and uh, and got this done. So tip of the hat, number one, for the Lord, obviously, for, for orchestrating all of this, but also for Nick stepping up and stepping in and realizing that this was an important story and filling that gap. Again, unbeknownst to him, what we had just gone through, but it was just perfect timing. And that's one of the reasons we believe that this movie had to see the light of day and had to come out right now. Well, I, I got to tell you, that story is even more interesting than anything else we've talked about. I mean, the movie will be great. It'll sell itself. But I mean, the fact that you say you have a production, that the, the finances fall through, the team is ready, the location's there, but you've got a budget you've got to be able to match. And this project fits like a hand in a glove ready made. That is crazy. I mean, exactly. I get exactly. it. I get how much of a, a, a Star Wars Luke Skywalker shot that is on the Death Star. Nick, so... Uh, what, 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 how does the spirit of God work with you? I'm a little bit Pentecostal. I like to figure this stuff. Did you have an impression you were supposed to call, Ryan? Was it urgent? Was it brewing? Uh, and you just decided to pull the trigger? Because obviously God was leading you. How did you get led to do that? Well, it's interesting. You know, I think that everything's timing in God's hands. And we had had some initial conversations with another one of the production groups, Michael Davis from Uptone Pictures. And at the time, there was nothing. And even as uh, Ryan will share with you, some of this, the cast wasn't available, then all of a sudden they were available. And even what you know Hollywood thought was going to mess us up with COVID ended up being to our benefit. So you know the Lord worked. And I think if you listen to what God is doing, as I shared with you even prior to us going on, we emote. What we put on screen, the stories that are told are so vital. Because I use an example. If, let's say right now, I craft a story and say, somebody got hit by a car. God has given us boundaries in our mind to see what that's like within reason. The problem with theater is today, you're subject to what 
someone else shows you on screen is somebody get hit by a car, right? So it's very important that you translate this to what we want. And we align immediately with the folks at Damascus and Uptone to bring a story that was going to be gritty, but was going to be accurate. Uh, one of the critiques we had, which is really sad, was we didn't show uh, Paul being drunk enough. And I'm like, you know what? God, in when somebody asks us to pray for someone who has an alcohol issue, we know what that issue is. You don't need to show them throwing up or or sick or you know disrespecting their family. God gives us these boundaries. And I felt from the Holy Spirit that there was this boundary we need to bring to film. Uh, the whole George Floyd thing was going on, all the Black Lives Matter issues. And I, I thought, you know what? We are one race, this Adamic race, and we need to bring the screen something that will coalesce people for Christ. You know, it's so interesting when you're talking about this, uh, because, you know, pathos is the moving of the emotion, logos is the moving of the mind. You could have a superior argument, but if you don't tell it in an emotional and emotive way, it doesn't grip. On the other hand, right. America, from my perspective, is under siege with narratives that are manufactured in the forges of hell, as far as I'm concerned, but they work because they grab you with imagery and emotion and stories about the 10-year-old girl that got raped. And, you know, what are you going to do, make her have that baby? And so, boom, the left is a master at emotional storytelling. And Christians yeah. are so, in a sense, um, uh, sincere that they're sincere to the point of being ineffective because they don't recognize they also have to tell a story. And uh, yeah. it's not just truth that sets you free. It's truth told in a way that like Jesus has a parable attached to it. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting you mentioned this stuff. So are you going to go with more? Does this embolden you now, uh, Nick, to do more projects like this? And and Ryan, are you saying, OK, this uh, are you going to move? On? I, know, I know you don't want to focus on other projects right now, but does it encourage you to go for the next one? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, we, I, I, um, as you walk into my office, I have a, I have a sign on my, um, on my wall here and I don't know who, who said it, it's credited anonymous, but it says the theater, meaning the movie theater is the church for the world at large. It's where people go to sit in the dark and contemplate Ooh. life. And as I walk into my office every day, Lance, I look at that and I think, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, Nick and I are just a, a small genre in the in the large, in what we consider Hollywood with air quotes. We're, we're a small piece of the pie. But as Christ followers, our job is very specific. Matthew 28 is very specific. And the paraphrase version is no matter what we do, our job is to spread that message. So Long-winded answer to say, absolutely. We know for certain that we've got a job to do, and our our lane happens to be storytelling. Uh, years ago, I toyed with the idea of vocational ministry and realized that was that was not my path. The Lord had a different path for me, and uh, and I think that we we can be effective by telling stories like this and real stories and not sugarcoating, you know, hard stories and gritty stories and and stories of real people, and most of all, the hope that's found on the other side of that, and that's the hope in Christ that this man experienced and that this movie portrays, and with my in my opinion, with excellence. Now you got you got to you got to help me out with one thing though, Ryan, because there's nothing that is more intre intrepid or intimidating than than um, improv comedy. Is it? Uh, you've, <laughs> You've done that. What did you learn doing comedy? Because yeah. I say we need some more bold comedians. Um, I, 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 can't, I showed up in a meeting with a group of depressed politicians and conservatives. I was late. And they said to me, they said, Lance, what do you think we should do? And out of my out of my mouth, I heard the words unleash the comedians because they have they have permission to go someplace that other people can't yeah. go unless maybe it's a podcaster. Now, like Joe Rogan, we got some permission to go places. But um, tell me about your improv experience in comedy. Just real yeah, quick. my my improv background. Most people who have seen the last few movies I've done, and my off my wife often says, you know, on this this last press tour that we've been on, she's like, you would never know he's funny. I, this movie, <laughs> and then the, another theatrical release that we did through Sony was a was a picture called Believe that I starred in, and it, you know, it's very serious. Both these roles have been very serious. The last couple uh, uh, um, uh, theatrical releases that I've done, but like you said, my background is in, improv comedy. Uh, you know, which you'd, again, you'd never know. But I, I started out doing improv comedy in college and then kind of parlayed that into a, a traveling improv comedy group. And I traveled all over the country doing um, uh, 
Christian comedy, which may on its face sound oxymoronic, but that's exactly what I did. I, I opened up at large platform uh, conferences and youth events and, you know, uh, music conferences. And so that's kind of my forte was, a, was comedian and an MC. And, and uh, you know, I, I never worked what we call worked blue, although I did a lot of uh, secular comedy as well and, and uh, comedy here at Improv Olympic in Hollywood alongside some secular comedians whose name you would all recognize. I, I try as best I can to you know, keep it between the lanes. And, uh, and, and people are always fascinated by how, how you do that. What, what does that look like? And how does that work? I accidentally started an, um, a viral video company. I, first of all, viral is hard to, to do nobody. There's no real recipe for viral, but I started a, a viral video company several years ago called dad dudes. And that spawned out of a, a Bible study. We were in the height of Disney's frozen. If you remember that. And I found myself as a 40 something year old guy singing those songs from the, from the Disney cartoon <laughs> out loud <laughs> And uh, and that spawned into a, a, a video that we shot from a dad's perspective called "Dads Respond to Disney's Frozen," and that accidentally launched a, launched a viral video campaign and kind of highlighted the comedy that we had all been involved in. And so, uh, thank, thanks for for digging that out and 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 pointing that out. But yeah, you're exactly right. Most people don't realize, especially with watching a, a, f- a film like this, that. Uh, kind of my forte is is an improv comedy. It's kind of funny. Well, we, I, I'm just going to keep that in your in the back of your mind because it's uh, you know the the idea of having a look Babylon B has proven there's an audience for satire, Christian satire. Yep. I mean, Elon Musk is yeah. even chuckling at it and, and doing interviews. If we could find a a Monty Python version of Babylon B that could do skits. I don't care. In the internet, it would go viral until uh, YouTube got, gets mad and shut them down. By the way, they shut me down and took 200,000 subscribers away from me. And I'm still fuming over that. But uh, they didn't hurt me on, on the other platforms. And I never built, never made a living off of YouTube so I could survive it. But um, real quick, we got one minute and 48 seconds. Nick, give me some words uh, uh, that you want to say to aspiring artists, Christians, Practical, you like the word gritty, so let's give some gritty advice for people that want to make a living in the arts mountain. What would you tell them? Well, first, don't try and follow the model of Hollywood. Try and follow the model of the Bible. The most intriguing stories are between those pages, and you bring those to life, you bring the analogies to life, you bring the parables to life. I think you're going to have some amazing material to work with. And trust yourself. You know, we all believe that Christ is in control of all. Uh, he controls every molecule in the universe. And as you build these stories, build them with confidence that the Holy Spirit's going to do the work. And uh, use your tools and the gifts you've got to get it on paper and then trust in people to bring it out and bring it to the screen. I love that. Uh, Ryan, give me give somebody who's an aspiring actor or producer or comedian a word of wisdom. What would you say? I would say God is the God of creativity. He's the God of humor. He's the God of comedy. He's the God of storytelling. He invented it. And so grab onto that and let's get better stories just like this one out there. Because I firmly believe that movies like this and movies that we have the capacity to to tell, I can sit with my 96-year-old grandmother on one side of me like I did the other night and my 10-year-old son on the other side of me and not have to worry about what they're seeing on the screen and not have to cringe. And we need more films just like that. Oh, I love what you just said. That's going to be Nick Logan and Ryan O'Quinn. We'll be hearing more from them in the future. You want to go to paulspromisemovie.com. I want you guys to give me reviews, give me comments, and I'm looking forward to seeing this become a huge, huge, huge success. God bless you. We'll be back again tomorrow with another exciting broadcast. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends, because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world. See you tomorrow. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and my employees and I want to thank you for your continued support by bringing you the biggest bath sale ever. Get my six-piece towel sets for the lowest price ever, only $39.96. His and her bathrobes, 50% off. Bath mats for as low as $17.49. And I'm also excited to announce the original My Slippers are back in stock. And now they come in even more colors and wide sizes. They're made with the same great patented technology. And yes,
plus, you still save $90 a pair. So get the biggest savings ever on bath sheets, bath mats, washcloths, hand towels, bathrobes, slippers, and so much more. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen, use your promo code, and get deep discounts on all MyPillow bath products, including our six-piece towel sets, regular $89.98, now only $39.96. Get all your shopping in while quantities